At the age of 82, legendary Hollywood icon Ryan O'Neill passed away. He was an award-winning actor as well as a matinee idol. On Friday afternoon, his son Patrick posted the depressing news on social media. Well, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to say, but let's get started, he said. My dad went away peacefully today, surrounded by his loving team who supported and cared for him, just as he would have for us. O'Neill was last observed in Brentwood, California on November 6, 2023, being helped into his car from a wheelchair by a caretaker. After being rolled down the walkway, Ryan was lifted from under his arm by two caregivers and placed into the front seat of his automobile. The films that made O'Neill most famous were those from the 1970s, such as Paper Moon, in which his daughter, Tatum O'Neill, co-starred. Additionally, he collaborated with some of the biggest female stars of the day, including Marisa Berenson on Barry Lyndon and Barbara Streisand on What's Up, Doc? and the main event. In 1970, Ryan received a nomination for a Best Actor Oscar for his popular movie Love Story co-starring Ally McGraw. After learning of the tragic news of Ryan's departure, Streisand paid respect to the late star on X, then known as Twitter, and posted a black-and-white photo of the two from their earlier days together. So sad to hear the news of Ryan O'Neill's demise, the actress posted as well. Together, we produced the movies What's Up, Doc? and The Main Event. He was endearing and humorous and he will live on. In addition, Mia Farrow posted an homage to Ryan on Instagram, including a number of old photos and writing, Rest in peace, dear Ryan. Notably, the two co-starred in the Peyton Place television series. In addition, Sharon Stone honoured O'Neill with a monochromatic image from his later years. I'm really sad when I post this. She added, Rip Ryan O'Neill, with a heart emoji. Ryan was well known for his long-lasting, high-profile romance with Charlie's Angels actress Farrah Fawcett. The two never got married. After he snatched the vivacious blonde beauty from her husband, Lee Majors of the Six Million Dollar Man fame, the two remained partners from 1979 to 1997. Together, they had a 38-year-old son named Redmond, who had run afoul of the law and had spent time in jail. At the Pitchess Detention Center in California, O'Neill was incarcerated in 2009 when it was discovered that he was in possession of heroin during a regular security check. When his mother passed away in June 2009 from cancer, he was incarcerated. Though he is not as visible these days, Redmond has acted in the movies Johnny Bravo, 1997, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, 1998, and Love Don't Cost a Thing, 2003. Ryan also had romantic relationships with Diana Ross, Bianca Jagger, Streisand, Jacqueline Bissett, Joan Collins, and Ursula Andress. Four children survive Ryan, Redmond James Fawcett O'Neill with Fawcett, Patrick O'Neill with Lee Taylor Young, and Tatum O'Neill and Griffin O'Neill with Joanna Moore. The celebrity also has five grandchildren. His kid uploaded a long note along with a picture of a beach at dusk. He stated, My wife Summer and I are going through a lot right now, but I will share some feelings to show you how amazing of a man he is. My hero of choice has always been my father, Ryan O'Neill. He always seemed larger than life, which is why I looked up to him. My dad was a Peyton Place TV star when I was born in 1967. Dad went on, that's where he met my mom, Lee Taylor Young, and I was born about nine months later, give or take a date night or two. In the early 1970s, my dad shot to fame on a global scale with Love Story. He went on to star in films such as What's Up Doc, Paper Moon, Barry Lyndon, A Bridge Too Far, The Main Event, and The Driver during this incredible decade. A legend in Hollywood he is, complete halt. Ryan's initial growth spurt can be attributed to my father. That is true. 
After appearing in 500 shows over the course of five years, he played Rodney Harrington on Peyton Place three days a week. Naturally, Ryan's popularity peaked with the release of Love Story, the movie that preserved Paramount Studios and gave my dad a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Born in Los Angeles, Ryan started his acting career in the 60s. He appeared in cameos on television programs including My Three Sons, Bachelor Father, and Leave It to Beaver. Then, he got the lead role of a lifetime on the soap opera Peyton Place, where he co-starred with Mia Farrow as small-town Hotty Rodney Harrington. Hollywood quickly cast him in motion picture parts because of his attractiveness and personality. He portrayed an Olympic athlete in the Games in 1970. Then, because Love Story, 1970, was a slow-moving, emotionally charged story, not many people had faith in him to play the lead. However, the sob tale of two Harvard students in love, a pampered rich kid who despises his father and his intelligent, tough girlfriend from a working-class background, wowed fans with their chemistry. Before the movie came out, O'Neill stated, I hope the young people like it. I want to avoid watching TV again. Next, he starred with William Holden in the TV film Love Hate Love, 1971, followed by Western Wild Rovers, 1971. His next successful role was opposite Streisand in the comedy What's Up, Doc? 1972. He was the talkative, wacky drifter to her talkative, stiff spouse. They were also in love in real life. Later, O'Neill starred opposite Jacqueline Bisset and Warren Oates in The Thief Who Came to Dinner, 1972, as a diamond thief. Then he and Bogdanovich got back together for the 1973 film Paper Moon, where he acted alongside Tatum O'Neill, Bogdanovich's daughter. As a result of his work in the movie, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, and exhibitors chose him to be the nation's second most popular celebrity of 1973. O'Neill worked on Barry Lyndon, 1975, for Kubrick for more than a year, but the costume drama was not well appreciated. The comedy Nickelodeon, 1976, starring Tatum O'Neill and Burt Reynolds, came next. It was explosive. O'Neill played General James Gavin in the large-scale ensemble film A Bridge Too Far, 1977, as a follow-up. Again, it was a failure for the box office king. The Driver, 1978, an action movie, came next, but it lacked wheels. His status as a huge movie star with the ability to sell tickets was beginning to erode. However, there were more failures, such as Circle of Two, which he would later claim he made for the money, and Green Ice, 1981. With the song Chances Are with Sybil Shepherd, he got a modest hit in 1989. When he and Farrah co-starred in Good Sports in 1991, he switched to television. Fans expected sizzle and chemistry, but they got none of it. A run of poorly received films followed, including Alicia Silverstone's TV series Mismatch, 2003, and Malibu's Most Wanted, 2003. His reunion with Love Story co-star McGraw in a production of A.R. Gurney's play Love Letters in 2016 was his next career high point. His lust for attractive women who were well-known themselves caused his romantic life to make news for decades. In 1963, O'Neill wed the actress Joanna Moore, his first wife. Before divorcing in 1966, they had two kids. O'Neill gained custody of Moore's children due to her drunkenness and drug use. In 1974, he filed for divorce from actress Lee Taylor Young, with whom he had a son from his first marriage. Then came the stunning Fawcett, who at the time caused quite a stir because of her popularity with majors. But eventually he cheated, they got into an argument, and it made tabloid headlines. After discovering O'Neill in bed with actress Leslie Stephenson, Fawcett ended their relationship. 
However, they reconciled in 2001 and remained close until her passing in 2009. He dated Angelica Houston as well. In her memoir, she would accuse him of mistreating her. His daughter Tatum claims that he had an extramarital affair with Melanie Griffith. Tatum O'Neill, Griffin O'Neill with Moore, Patrick O'Neill with Taylor Young, and Redmond O'Neill are O'Neill's four children. Alongside Fawcett is James Fawcett O'Neill. In addition to his 2009 jail term, Redmond has had other run-ins with the authorities. He broke his probation in 2015 and was given a three-year prison sentence for possessing a handgun. In 2016, he was set free the year after. Tatum, his half-sister, has also struggled with addiction in the past. She told people that his drug misuse and addiction was so bad that it breaks my heart. At the time of his 2015 arrest. Although I adore him, I have never witnessed the darker side of addiction. Nobody is sure how to handle Redmond. Based on my observations, it appears that he will not be able to survive. He was detained once more in 2018 on suspicion of robbery, attempted murder, and possession of illegal narcotics, including heroin and meth. Redmond spoke candidly with Radar and Line in May 2018 from jail shortly after his arrest, asserting that my entire life's experiences have affected me the most, rather than drugs, as the source of his problems. Attributing his problems to being kicked out and living on the streets, and going to jail, being put in a psychiatric ward, and being embarrassed all the time because of who my parents are, he blamed his parents. That put pressure on me and set off a time bomb in my head. I never want attention, and I never asked for any of this. The newspaper then revealed in February of this year that Redmond has been incarcerated in a state mental health facility for slightly more than three years following a ruling in 2018 that he was not competent to stand trial for attempted robbery and murder charges.